Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Rick Ortiz, the editor of dadsdivorce.com. We've been following the story of Christopher Savoy. He's an uh, American father. He was married to a Japanese woman. And uh, they, they, after their divorce, uh, they made headlines because uh, Christopher Savoy had a feeling that, that what was going to happen uh, after the divorce was that the uh, wife would take the children back to Japan. Um, he brought that, uh, that fear to the court, uh, was granted a temporary restraining order. The restraining order was then lifted and uh, Mrs. Savoy did exactly what her husband feared and, and fled the country to her native Japan with both children. Uh, where the story made headlines was that Christopher Savoy then followed her and uh, in an effort to uh, bring the children back to the United States uh, was arrested in Japan and he was held. Uh, we just found out today that he has been released from custody. However, there is still some concern because the, uh, now that even though he's coming back to the United States, he's not allowed to return with the children. So uh, we're, we're, even though he is released and we're happy to hear that, uh, he still has a, a battle ahead of him to have contact with his kids. Um, we're going to talk today to Paul Joseph Bruno. Mr. Bruno is a counsel with Bell, Tennant, and Frog out of Nashville, Tennessee, and he served as counsel for Mr. Savoy. Uh, Mr. Bruno, welcome. Thank you. If you could, uh, tell us a little bit about the case uh, and uh, get our, uh, our, our visitors uh, up to date with, with what's going on with the uh, Savoy case. The Christopher is an American citizen and a, and a Japanese citizen. Uh, he grew up in the United States in Rhode Island, graduated from college in Rhode Island in 92, then moved to Japan, where he uh, became uh, an MD and a PhD, and he uh, eventually married a lady by the name of Noriko Savoy mm -hmm. in Japan. They had two children. Um, back last year, um, about 2007, 2008, he decided to get divorced, and both he and his wife at the time, Noriko, and their children moved to the United States, to Tennessee, and instituted divorce proceedings. Uh, they reached an agreement with their divorce and entered into a marital dissolution agreement and a permanent parenting plan. Um, she received a substantial uh, monetary settlement out of it, and he received, um, obviously, visitation with his children. Um, he had assumed that she would buy a house here, get a job here, get in school, something along those lines. Um, and part of the agreement was that she could take the children back to Japan for six weeks during the summer so that she could, you know, the children could interact with their grandparents mm -hmm. uh, and go back to Japan, you know, where they were born and had grown up. Um, for a little while, they're, they're now six and eight, but she ended up, uh, what ended up happening was she did not buy a house, she rented a house, she did not get a job, she did not get enrolled in school, and did not appear to have any significant um, social contacts here or another boyfriend or you know prospective husband or anything. Sure. That made him nervous, um, and she also was communicating with him the fact that she did not really like being in the United States, that she did not like her children becoming Americanized and losing their Japanese identity. And there were just a number of indicators that she was not happy here, that she that led him to believe that she may leave. Um, with his prior attorney then, he went to court, uh, obtained a restraining order preventing her from going to Japan uh, because you know he did not think she was sufficiently rooted or tied into Tennessee, mm -hmm. and that um, she had access to a lot of money, and that she could just pick up and go to Japan, and if she did do that, then he would have an extremely difficult time uh, getting his children back. And why, uh, for, our, for our visitors, why is it that Japan uh, poses such a, a threat as far as uh, one parent leaving with the children? Okay, well, there, there's a, a treaty known as the Hague Convention Treaty, and Japan is not a signature on that uh, mm -hmm. treaty. And, and kind of going back one step, in Japan the culture is such that when people get divorced, generally speaking, the children go with the mother and the money and property, everything goes with the father. Mm -hmm. And they don't really have uh, 
uh, visitation like we have in the United States. It's basically mm-hmm. the children go with the mother, money and property with the father, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they, their culture is not the same regarding divorce as it is in the United States. Mm-hmm. They're not a signature on the Hague Convention Treaty, and because of that, they do not have to recognize uh, American domestic orders. So even though um, Christopher would have court-ordered you know, custody or visitation in the United States, Japan does not have to honor that. Mm-hmm. And that's why his fear was if she went back uh, and decided to stay in Japan that he literally may never see his children again until they become adults, and if they wanted to meet with him, they could at that point. Right. This is not the first case. My understanding is there's over 100 American uh, fathers who are in this, have this dilemma right now mm-hmm. uh, with Japan. So he initially, a one judge signed the restraining order. A different judge conducted a hearing on it and basically believed that the mother would not do such a thing, and he lifted the restraining order. Mm-hmm. Then I was hired to come in to appeal that order, uh, basically, we asked the judge to vacate the order um, and to recuse himself from further proceedings. He did recuse himself, but he did not vacate the order. So the mother was allowed to go to Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, she went to Japan. She returned with the children from Japan. The father then had one week's vacation with the children in Rhode Island. He returned the children to her on a Tuesday evening pursuant to the court's orders. That's what he was supposed to do. Right. That Thursday morning, he received a call from the school here in Tennessee. He was wanting to know where his kids were, and he thought that they should have been in school, did not know where they were, immediately tried to contact their mother. Um, the cell phone apparently was not on. He was getting you know, no nothing from her. They went to the house. The police searched her house. She was not there. Uh, he contacted her parents, which were his in-laws in Japan, and at that time, the father-in-law had told him, don't worry, the, the, the mother and the children are here in Japan, they're safe. And then the father-in-law let Christopher talk to his son to confirm that, in fact, they were in Japan and they were safe. Uh, then there was um, indications that she's not coming back. She told her landlord here that he could simply keep all of her furniture and, and personal property, sell it off or do whatever he wanted to with it and apply that towards whatever rent she owed and basically that she's not coming back. Now, I, I know a lot of the, uh, our, our site is primarily visited by fathers who are going through divorce. Uh, yes. And I think a lot of them probably are wondering, uh, there was a restraining, there was a temporary restraining order, order on Miss uh, Savoy. And the question I think many are wondering is, was she, was she uh, possibly by virtue of her sex given, um, uh, given, a, a better situation as far as the lifting of that. In other words, had it been had the shoe been on the other foot, had it been a was this gender based? Does it does it appear to be that way that the uh, that the restraining order was lifted? Uh, my opinion is that gender did not factor into it. Okay. I, I think what factored into it is the judge could not imagine or contemplate the fact that a parent would go to another country with their children forever and keep their children from the other parent. I don't think that he believed that would happen because it's so unique. Uh, I I think that whether it would have been the father or the mother, I think the judge would have probably made the same ruling. Mm -hmm. I don't think it had anything to do with the gender.